viewers it's James Com, your half-assed and let me restate this your half-assed 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 reporter and we're back on the Bowery <laughs> I'm gonna make a little visit to the Andrew Edlin gallery and we're gonna take a look at an exhibition we shall make America wonder work by Joe Coleman, Felipe Jesus Consalvos, Henry Darger, and Duke Riley. Take a quick glance at this piece by Felipe Jesus. I guess this is the title piece for the show, We Shall Make America Wonder. Well, I think I first bumped into some of Felipe's work at the Outsider Art Fair about eight or ten years ago. And I was struck at how contemporary this stuff is. And then I, uh, I looked at the, the listings and found out that a lot of this stuff was made between the 1920s and the 1950s. So a lot of this is not dated. Just to sweep over the installation here. It's an impressive Duke Riley piece. This is by Joe Coleman. Contemplation of a diagnosis of T-cell lymphoma. 2015 acrylic on panel. Well, I'm thinking that's not a real happy title, but yeah, we got the little, maybe those are microscopic views of cancer cells. Now, Joe has been a uh, presence in the East Village scene since probably the mid 70s. And, uh, well, he's quite a character and He's not only known for his paintings, but he's also known as a uh, pretty outrageous performer. Okay, so this is a huge piece by Duke Riley. It's titled it's coming through a hole in the air, 2017, ink on paper. This is 130 by 99 inches. Well, Duke has been uh, doing some unusual work. I think he's based in Brooklyn, maybe, maybe Williamsburg. And uh, He's someone that does a lot of stuff that's dealing with kind of uh, the tropes of history, at least local history, kind of American folk history, and particularly stuff that's kind of playing with the time frame around the Revolutionary War. And if I'm not mistaken, he did a, uh, he made a, a, uh, boat that was based on the design for a uh, it's like a Revolutionary War submarine. It doesn't go all the way under, but it, it was designed to uh, sneak up and attack ships at night and I guess maybe boiler holes, and I think it was called the Acorn. And uh, actually, uh, just as a 
piece of woodworking and uh, design. It's quite a fantastic piece. But as this piece shows, uh, Duke is not going to back off on, on an idea if it gets a little too, uh, too big or too uh, extravagant. This is all ink on paper. It looks like uh, parchment. This is more F Felipe Jesus. No, I think it's in It's titled Saint Georgia. Georgiev. 1920-1950 mixed media collage and paper on car with carved wood frame. Okay, a lot of this is um, cigar bands or pieces of labels from cigar boxes. We got some stamps. Oh, and a two-dollar bill. Started looking backward, and uh, yeah, I don't know what the backstory is on Felipe Jesus, but it's hard to believe that he was totally uh, unaware of fine art. Uh, a lot of this has a real Dadaist sense about it, and I guess if you if you wanted to, you could probably narrow down the dates by looking at uh, some of these labels and how some of the advertising changed over time. Look at that, we got a Campbell soup can. There's a uh, pretty well-known contemporary artist from Chicago. It's Tony Fitzpatrick, who does a lot of work that looks like this, but uh, yeah, that's all <laughs> contemporary. Felipe Jesus has got a great uh, design sense. And I think this is a good example of him also um, employing found objects like this found frame. This is titled The Marauders Are Coming. Mixed media, 39 by 21 inches. This is actually noteworthy that, uh, okay, he's got a lot of elements that became popular in pop art. We saw the Campbell soup can. We've got the map of America that Jasper Johns painted several times. Some other elements. Henry Darger. At Jenny, Richie still pursued along the Aquaburg's run in the storm by the enemy. Well, I think one of the interesting things, of course, Henry Darger might be one of the prime examples of American outsider art from Chicago.
And uh, yeah, he made most of this work basically in secret. I guess he had, he had fantasies that he was gonna publish a book based on the, the Vivian girls. I think the interesting thing is that uh, someone like Duke Riley and Joe Coleman are now kind of being paired with some of the classic outsiders. This is very early Darger. This is untitled, mixed media collage and watercolor on paper. And uh, yeah, I like the way that this is pasted together and I'm wondering if maybe uh, Henry put shellac or something on some of them. This is untitled, mixed media and watercolor on paper. Also untitled. No. I can tell that this is early because at some point Henry was not doing the collaging the photographs in there and a lot of his drawing was done using uh, transfer paper and uh, it would basically just and a trace collected his figures and kind of traced them and actually, I guess, spent money having uh, photographic enlargements of some of these characters done. This is titled Granician. Gazunian watercolor and pencil on paper. This is more like the classic Darger. And this is someone that was totally self taught, but he had a very uh, wonderful touch with his watercolors and again a very simple palette. And we're gonna end up looking at this piece by Joe Coleman. It's actually quite a uh, tour de force. This is titled In the Realms of the Unreal, Henry Darger, 1998 acrylic on panel, mounted on child's pajamas. I'm a big fan of text. They even tried to rip apart her chest, even tore out her heart and entrails, and tried to cut the arms asunder. <laughs> uh, so I wonder if that's Henry's text, probably. Uh, as I said, Joe is quite an interesting character. He was doing performances and he's very, interested in the um, like the sideshow Coney Island kind of oddity chamber of bizarre things and as I was looking at this portrait of Henry I'm thinking of another fantastic Chicago artist who was Ivan Lorraine Albright, who was maybe one of the most, well, Jean Dubuffet thought he was pretty spooky, but uh, was one of the most 
intense of the hyper-realist artists. And it's actually great to think that um, Henry Darger and him were probably contemporaries. But he was also someone that would get in and uh, really work the details and you would see every wrinkle and pimple and blemish and wart. And you could probably spend hours looking at this and trying to read the text and I think Joel had uh, three or four pieces, I guess they're contemporary or fairly recent, and there was so much tiny text in them that they actually supplied you with magnifying glasses so that you could read the text. it has been a stroll through of We Will Make America Wonder. the work of Joe Coleman, Duke Riley, Henry Darger, and Felipe Jesus Consalvos. Here's Andrew Edlin on the Bowery. You can like this, subscribe, recommend it to your friends, and link it. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. I might ignore them, but you can leave them anyway. But please help me say thank you, Kate. Thank you, Naga Ecstasy. Thank you. Thank you.